So our um, lecture has started and the first question is, who are these two? Um, Greek gods. They are almost like gods, but he is correct that these are uh, Greek philosophers. Yeah. No, Descartes is not a Greek philosopher. Descartes is actually a French philosopher, French mathematician. Not Pythagoras, but this is Aristotle and this is uh, Socrates. Uh, this is Aristotle and this is Plato. Sorry. Okay, so the sequence you heard of these names Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. Okay, so the sequence is Socrates. Uh, his student was Plato and Plato's student was Aristotle okay so this is a very famous painting this is an iconic painting from the high you've heard of the Renaissance which was uh, Italian uh, you know uh, uh, sort of a flowering of cultural uh, productivity uh, in every area architecture art so this is a painter called Raphael not Nadal but a painter called Raphael so um, he this painting is called the school of Athens the reason this is called a school of Athens and this has importance for people who are learners like you you should be lifelong learners in the school of Athens basically this was Plato was the teacher he had a school called the Academy it was uh, in Athens and the student in that school was Aristotle okay so most famous student of uh, Plato in, in, the, in the Academy so this is why this painting is called the school of Athens and it actually has features it features many of the ma uh, well-known figures of the Italian Renaissance so like there's Ptolemy over here Ptolemy is uh, the the astronomer okay so many this is Diogenes the philosopher but this is a, this is a very famous painting by Raphael called the school of Athens so it's important to uh, understand that in the Academy you have this modern education system which is very great focused right so in Plato's Academy there was no attendance there were no exams there were no grades and there were no degrees and the end product was Aristotle right <laughs> so uh, in many ways we have moved away from the essence of education we have made it very process focused especially in our uh, you know in, in India it's much more so than in other countries where we are people who are very very focused on grades okay so you have one of the things you have to change is now we are coming into the mm, now we are coming into the uh, so I'm going to be a little bit uh, it may feel to you a little bit like I'm jumping between topics but just bear with me because uh, it's a little bit to some extent that is my style of teaching but everything is there in your um, in your notes okay so you'll be able to see the connection but one of the things that we are trying to uh, one of the messages that we are trying to give you is that you have to focus on skill development okay now you're in a different mode uh, that you know compared to um, skills versus degrees is what we are talking about so using the example of the Academy we are now coming to this idea that you have to get out of ma you have to change your mindset to some extent because uh, to a great extent that is you should now because most of you how many of you are serious about a career in the corporate world <coughs> many of you okay it seems like slightly lower percentage than we had in what we had in section B but even if you're going to go back to your dad's business I think it's useful that if you're going to be here might as well train yourself to be a good MBA student like a, a top-notch business students it can't hurt because anyway this is a very little amount of time very small amount of time for you and you're putting in the money might as well get the most out of it train yourself in the right way so what we're talking about is skills versus degrees now you're here in a professional program corporates care about corporates care about skills they don't care so much about degrees okay you understand what I'm saying like this uh, have you heard of uh, this lady Cheryl Sandberg is a different um, okay Facebook. Facebook CWO right okay so she is uh, and what is CWO chief operating, chief operating officer okay oh um, so normally people say CEO I'm just saying don't say CWO <laughs> okay but um, so this is the interview with Sandberg um, no this is a different this is now Davos is going on so they're just interviewing people from okay um, uh, um. Let's let's forget about that. But the ba basic message of this article, this is now behind a paywall, so you can't read this. But the basic message of this article is that Facebook doesn't really care about people having MBAs. They don't really care about what degree you have. She's basically saying at this point, at some point in this article, she says that we care about what you can do and not about what degree you have. So you need to change your orientation or your professional program. You need to get a good job when you finish the program. So you should be focused on acquiring skills. All right. 
and not just on getting you should try to get good grades because that also becomes important try to maintain decent grades but there's more to it than just grades so you have a real goal has to be skill development and that's what should be your primary focus and we'll be showing you how to do that all right okay so we started with this uh, brief introduction with the uh, academy and that's why i came to this point but before this i'll just go briefly into your um cp marking let's capture this also the way it's going to work is that we are going to study this course uh, because this is also related to the idea of uh, skill development the way we are going to study this course is that we are going to train you to look at um, it's going to be a very intensive uh, course normally lab is taught in most business schools through textbooks okay uh, we are not going to use that we, we, we have given you a textbook I'll come to that later but mainly lab we are going to train you in a very intensive way so that at the end of the course hopefully if you put in solid amount, uh, solid amount of effort you will be very confident in analyzing judgments understanding the heart of a legal uh, you know problem of a case right and trying to and you'll be confident enough to even argue with lawyers that uh, you know on, on questions on, on, on what kind of methodology should be followed because God forbid that if you ever have to get into litigation in your own life right you should be in a position to second guess your lawyer because sometimes you don't get a very good lawyer many people have this problem uh, and therefore uh, you you should be in a position and law is a subject where you can if you put in some solid effort with the right training you can actually get a comfort level with the subject good enough to be able to second guess the lawyer second guessing you understand what that term means second messing means lawyers saying do this put the case in this court but you should be able to tell him no no this is not the right decision should put the case in that particular other court okay many times lawyers put the cases in the wrong court also because there are different court for different types of matters so you'll find this very often in Calcutta there are many cases sitting in the wrong court they should be in a different court because the lawyer himself doesn't know where the court should uh, the case should be so uh, we're going to teach it to you in a very intensive manner and the main modus operandi is going to be like this that we are going to give you uh, these are we are mainly going to be using the Delhi University case mats uh, for different uh, subjects which are very good actually they're used around the country there are many classic cases from all these topics so here's an example of a case from contract law right so uh, what are we are going to do but don't just because we're doing Delhi University don't take those DU kunjis and dukkis that will not help you to answer the questions that I'm going to ask you okay so focus on the way I'm trying training you to reach this so this this kind of case will be assigned to you as a reading and then the next day I'm going to randomly catch people from the group and this is how it ties into the group and there'll be some questions associated with the case so I, when I assign a case I'll also give you some questions related to this case and those are the questions that you'll have to answer in the CP right so what's going to happen is we are going to come here and then we are going to take this sheet okay say we just did this example with Mukul in section B so let's say Mukul is the group leader of the group and maybe some, somebody else say Saloni is also in his group then what we will do is I'll just say random and then there's four or five other people on that particular day on the first day of the CP I'm going to just take anybody randomly from the group and whatever they score and everybody will be asked the same question okay if you want to be asked the same question they will be separated from the group uh, made to stand here so you can't communicate and then I'll show you the question that each member from the group has to answer and whatever each member scores so whatever say Saloni scores for their group will be as that score will apply to all the group members okay are you following what I'm saying so this forces everybody to be on their toes everyone has to be prepared because you don't know who I'm going to catch and sometimes I may catch the same guy two days in a row all right and so this is going to get this is your total score so if they are on the first day let's say somebody scores 11 then the score will go up you can see it goes up to 67 okay so this is total and this will be applied to everybody else in the group I've not put the other scores here but essentially everybody else will get the same score in the group okay is this clear this is how it's going to work once we get into the CP mode which will be hopefully very soon within two or three sessions so that's your marking that's 50% of your score and the way it will be graded eventually is that we will take the top team let's say the top team is 72 and the lowest scoring team between all the sections is 47 then what I'll do is I'll just take I'll give an arbitrary grade to the top team 72 maybe I will give them 100% that depends on how I feel the group has performed the whole uh, batch has performed in that particular course if you if I find that most of you guys have not put in any effort then I'll give the top team also a low grade 
like not 100%, maybe 60% or something. And then I'll arbitrarily give the lowest team also some percentage grade. So let's say if I give 100% to the top team and 40% uh, to the lowest team, then everybody else will get a prorated percentage in between. Are you following? Okay, so that's how it will be scored. So that's going to be your CP. So essentially all it means is that you have to take your CP seriously because it's 50% of the course and that's where your learning will also come in. And don't, you may find this very difficult going when, when we uh, come to some of these cases. But I can tell you from past experience that many cases like among your super seniors I remember, they were actually saying, especially with the income tax cases, they were finding it very difficult. But the same girl who was complaining one day before the course, the case that, you know, so this is very difficult, please explain it first. But the same girl came and gave a fantastic presentation on that course, on that particular case. Okay. So if you find something difficult, don't just give up. Just keep pushing. And then eventually you may find, uh, you may find that it's quite clear. Okay. So that, so we have seen those situations as well. All right. So how is this going to work? Uh, if at any point of time if you don't follow what I'm saying uh, the train of my thought maybe I'm jumping a little bit between here and there if you don't understand anything please ask a question okay I'll never fire anybody for not asking a question but I will fire you if I find if I randomly catch you and ask you a question and I find that you have not understood and you have still not asked the question then are you then you have a problem okay are you following what I'm saying okay Right, so these are so this unit zero in lab is generally it's a non syllabus material, so you're not going to be evaluated on this. But I do this with every batch, I, I spend one class doing this because I feel that we should give every batch the benefit of the doubt. Sometimes we find in your senior batches people are not that serious, but I should assume that every batch is a fresh start. Okay, so I assume that many of you are serious about making a career in the corporate world. And the way I see my role as a teacher is that the teacher is like a coach, I don't really see it in the traditional teacher sense. But I see myself more as a coach. Okay, we are trying to achieve an outcome here. So you should be very clear about the outcome, which is the outcome that we are trying to achieve is that we are trying to produce outstanding business students, okay, business graduates, B school graduates. So at the end of the course, you should be coming out as an outstanding business graduate. So my goal is I'm only concerned about that. Okay, I'm not concerned about giving you a, a easy time or making your life very easy by giving you help here and there. I may be driving you quite hard, but you should understand why that is happening because my goal is to produce the result that we are all looking for which is that when you come out you should be an outstanding business student is this clear should just that show that you're clear about uh, why we are doing what we are doing okay all right so this is the so in this um, first unit unit zero actually we have some general guidelines some slightly philosophical guidelines which i think is important for young people to be aware of at least somebody should tell you once because many of these things i feel i i regret that nobody told me this when i was your age maybe i would have taken better decisions uh, if they had told me that okay so first thing is we've given your textbook on logic please pick up your textbook i will not be able to deal with this uh, textbook in in the class we are trying to set up a formal course on logic but it'll take some time but I've given you this textbook mainly because your course fee includes a uh, price of a textbook okay <laughs> so I feel that you're entitled to a textbook and the reason I chose the logic textbook is that I think logic is a very important subject I think it's the mother of all subjects really and it's more important even than mathematics because all mathematics has to be logical but all logic is not mathematical okay you can have logical statements just using the English language which do not use mathematical symbols but they are still logical you will see that law is very logical but it's not mathematical okay so therefore logic and unfortunately the problem with most educational systems is certainly in our country nobody is taught logic in a formal way according to me we should be teaching students logic a solid course on logic for at least two or three years in school solid courses on logic because logic is the mother of all uh, subjects you know every subject you go to engineering or computer science especially computer science everything is based on logic so if you have a classical training in logic it's very important so this book will help you if you can spend the time of course your first priority is the PGDM program but if you can spend the time later on even after you graduate from uh, college uh, please make sure you read this book and try to develop some basic understanding of logic okay so just a little bit of learning on, on uh, this this idea is called meta learning your students you are going to be engaged in learning you should also have some idea about meta learning means learning about learning methodology meta is the word we use M E T A. 
okay so you should also have some awareness of how what is happening in the world of teaching what are the different methods of teaching should have some kind of working knowledge of that all right uh, so what you are used to just want to introduce a few terms uh, case method you are used to the case method everybody knows by now case method so this is referred to as a seminar style teaching method okay this is the main uh, word here seminar style and lecture tutorial method okay so seminar style is case method you already know how it works teacher doesn't really speak much uh, they just collate what the uh, students are saying right and uh, you're already familiar with it that's called a seminar style teaching method lecture tutorial method is how you've been taught maths in school and college right the teacher comes and tells you okay this is how the matrix looks like these are the rows and columns this is how you multiply matrices then so it's a lecture format and then the teacher will give you some problem on matrix multiplication and then if you have a problem not solving it then the teacher will help you out okay so that's called the lecture tutorial method right are you following what I'm saying okay you should be aware of these terms <coughs> so certain types of subjects are better suited to uh, you know each of these types of methods like I think marketing OB HR strategy is very well suited to the case method but other subjects I feel even like finance I personally feel is better suited to this kind of method because it's very technical mathematics is also better can you imagine teaching mathematics using a case method it's not very efficient right you can always teach mathematics using a case method but it's not efficient you understand what is meant by efficiency that you get the job done in the f fastest possible time right so it's not efficient in certain uh, subject depends on the subject matter so you should know these terms and then the other term is the flipped classroom style okay what happens in the flipped classroom this is what we're going to be following in lab so what happens flipped you understand it's like I have a glass and I flip it on its head so flip means I turn everything upside down so flipped classroom normally what happens in class the traditional method of learning we're used to is that the teacher comes and gives a lecture okay maybe he teaches you uh, calculus then you have an initial session on differential calculus the theory is taught to you then some problems are done and then you get an exam okay so the teacher already explained it and then so you have the explanation from the teacher coming before the evaluation and then you get a quiz and then you're graded on the quiz right so the ex evaluation comes after the explanation the teacher's explanation in the flipped classroom the reason it's called flipped people use some other definition which are not really correct because it doesn't bring out the flipped aspect why is it called flipped because you're going to be evaluated before you get the teacher's explanation okay so what's going to happen is if you go back to this class if you go back to this course um, this case as an example this will be in your uh, in your syllabus okay so this case will be assigned to you you'll be taught the basic principles of contract law okay initially and then this case will be given to you as a reading and there'll be some questions attached to the case now I've not explained the case and one of the things that's different about law compared to what you've studied in marketing cases and strategy cases is that in law there's only one right answer especially the judgments that we are studying some of the aspects of law have multiple answers those are discussion areas but when it comes to the analysis of a case uh, the structure of law is such that there's only one right answer you have to understand exactly what logic the court has used to arrive at the decision okay so it's different from marketing cases or strategy cases because there's only one right answer and the questions will be asked and you are going to be so this whole CP grading business was going to happen the CP grading business is going to happen now I've not explained the case I give you the reading I give you some questions I've given you some basic ideas of contract law I've given you some resources and you have to analyze everything yourself and answer the question yourself without any explanation from the teacher up, up front so you may feel that it's very difficult because it's very unusual okay but just bear with me and just trust in the method and try to do your best as I said some of your seniors initially got very scared income tax cases I can't figure it out but eventually she made a fantastic presentation so she got like top marks in the uh, and happens quite often actually so uh, so therefore push through and try to under, understand the logic of course it helps if your English comprehension is very good it helps you to understand the uh, the judgment and this is also something that will come out later when we discuss communication skills connected to that is the idea of English comprehension you should have, your English comprehension should be uh, you need to improve your English comprehension this will help you to some extent but you can take some other, yeah anybody has a question okay all right so we continue are you following so far okay some other classroom um, pointers 
please make sure that okay I don't expect everybody to be interested in the material in lab maybe even my teaching delivery is not appealing to you so if you are not finding the course interesting you're allowed to sleep you can also eat and drink in the class all that is allowed but drink means not alcohol <laughs> but uh, you can drink eat in the class if you've missed you I don't want anybody to have ulcers so if you missed but please don't make a mess of it like don't make your ah, I'm eating look at me I'm eating <laughs> don't make it a big uh, uh, you know thing but if you're hungry you missed your lunch or something you can bring your food to class I don't have a problem but don't make a mess like don't uh, like throw things all over the desk and don't make it a big deal that you're eating and distract the other class members but for otherwise you can eat drink whatever uh, and I don't want to see too many people going out of the classroom like sometimes you have this situation because in your seniors uh, in the case of your seniors where the finance material is very heavy so they can't handle it and I force people to concentrate from end to end I will teach right till the end of the class and so therefore what happens is I can understand just to get a break and I don't let anybody look anywhere else they have to look at me so it becomes too difficult and they need a break and they are rushing out to get some water and that's very distracting to, to me so I, if, if you guys keep going out too much then I have to ban people from going out from the class okay so uh, try to behave yourself and, and, and maintain good discipline uh, these are the basic um, uh, sort of some administrative aspects of the course so what I was saying is yeah so uh, please pay attention so other you are allowed to sleep you can eat and drink but otherwise you have to pay attention attention okay and I have not taken the phones this time I have a box for collecting phones but I expect you guys to if you guys if you guys are on good behavior I don't see people looking down at the phones then I won't confiscate the phones but in your second year I had to confiscate before the end start of the class I used to capture all the phones in any way your phones are supposed to be switched off okay so I should not see anybody looking down at the phones you're not allowed to look down you can sleep but otherwise you have to look at me when I look around I should see you looking at me okay any question you ask me don't ask your partners or buddies okay so flip classroom now you understand what flip classroom is you're going to be doing that in this course okay this is how it's going to work it may feel difficult but just push through I've just given you some links to software if you want just to explore text to speech is very useful actually I did my entire LLB uh, all these cases we had to do at about 35 cases into six six papers 35 cases six semesters all those cases judgments and I read them from uh, you know multiple times so I didn't have time because I was traveling a lot so I used to convert all the text material into speech and then later on I found that actually my retention is better if I listen to the case rather than read it so you can experiment with it I've given you a software uh, this is actually you need to buy it but uh, it's good it's good software there are some other software um, I should give you one which is free but it's on a desktop version I don't know if I have a TTS reader you can read this you can do this this is a desktop version this is free you can convert text to speech so you can just Google this I think it's TTS reader.com this is a free software this one you have to buy um, okay so I'm going to spend this first section the first lecture really is going to be spent on some motivational questions which are not really related to law as such slightly philosophical questions but I feel these are important uh, because nobody ever had a discussion with me when I was your age on these issues I felt they would be useful so we are trying to try and make sure that uh, even if 10% 15% of the batch can get some benefit from these ideas it'll be worth it so let's look at some of the ideas that we want to just convey to you and this is going to happen in a lecture tutorial method okay so if you find it you may find it a little bit boring because I'm not asking people like what is your opinion what is this guy uh, what is her opinion but uh, it's faster to deliver the material in this manner lecture tutorial method is much more efficient when I'm trying to basically give you certain ideas because remember how this whole thing is going to work so remember that the overall goal is that we are trying to produce outstanding business students and how is that going to happen mainly through the PGDM program you should try and do justice to the program and but that's not going to be good enough because given where you guys are if you want to compete with the top students in all the business schools okay and all the top business schools people are working very hard they don't just they don't just do the curriculum part okay they're doing uh, all kinds of stuff outside the curriculum so uh, obviously the curriculum comes first so the point here is that uh, I got a little lost what was I saying um, okay so that the idea is um, 
I'm still a little bit lost. But anyway, so the idea is that first thing is that you can compete with the best students. Okay, let's just go on. You can compete with the best students. We're trying to just give you some. Okay, yeah, I understand what I, where I got lost. Okay, what I was trying to say is that this whole thing, that the way this thing is going to be done is that remember we have to produce outstanding business students. Main goal is through the main technique is through the PGDA program. But additionally, we'll also be giving you some pointers. Okay, and you have to work with those pointers on your own in your spare time. All right. So remember, as I said, I'm, a, I'm like a coach. So part of the things I will be working with you in the class, but we can't work on everything. So some I'll give you a pointer like, okay, you need to work on your backhand, which means you have to go and practice on your backhand on your own all the time because I've given you that instruction. So that's how it's going to work. Okay. So this is part of that. Then I'm giving you various pointers which you need to watch out for and work on them on your own. So the main message here, all this, you can read all this. The main message here is the perspiration part. You guys are familiar with this quotation? Genius is 99% perspiration. You know this quotation? And this is from Thomas Alva Edison, okay? So who failed 1000 times to invent the electric bulb, but eventually he got it. So a very famous inventor, very brilliant guy. He used to say that I use my body to carry my brain around. So, uh, and even he, just imagine that even he says that genius is 99% perspiration. The message of this particular module here is that everything is based on hard work. Okay, and so that, as I say, in my view, I don't make a distinction between stupid people and smart people. Uh, I make the distinction between lazy people and industrious. Industrious, you know what industrious is, hard working. Okay, industrious means hard working. So, um, I say that actually people we call stupid, they're actually too lazy. The fundamental problem with them is they're lazy because to become smart, you need to work hard. Okay, so your brain is like a plastic entity. It's like a muscle. You work your biceps in the gym, your biceps get bigger. You work your brain, you push yourself learning something. You work your brain and your brain becomes more powerful. It's not a static entity. So the stupid people are actually too lazy to do, to do the hard work that's required to become smart. So the message of this module is work ethic. You guys all know Elon Musk. Yes, so, yeah, Tesla Motors, SpaceX. Now there's a new boring company. You know the boring company? Yes, sir. They're tunneling through under under Los Angeles. They're tunneling under Los Angeles, trying to put that hyperloop in hyperloop, place. Yes, sir. Right? So boring company. It's very exciting to work at the boring company, actually. That's the thing. So um, anyway, so Elon Musk is a multi-billionaire, you know that? Yes, sir. He does not need to work. But he's running all these companies and how hard is he working he's working to he works himself to death actually his idea is that when i go to bed i should be so exhausted that i'm just going to collapse so he used to actually when tesla was having a lot of production problems he used to have a pillow he used to have a pillow underneath his desk at the tesla factory and he used to sleep at the factory itself so this is what i say. i always say that uh, elon musk is the poster child for the for a work at for work ethic okay you understand this term work ethic the most important one of the most important things you'll learn everything in life is work ethic in fact i don't regard a person if i see a person who does not have a work ethic i personally don't regard him as a human being i think they're like a subhuman kind of amoeba or kind of thing okay uh, work ethic is the most important thing in the world work ethic means that you are willing to put in there's no maximum amount of work or anything involved you are willing to put in as much work as is required to do a quality job okay if you have this thing it will also make sure that you're never really unhappy in life people who have a strong work ethic are never really unhappy in life okay so this is the main message of this that you need to focus properly and here i will give you some tunnel vision uh, i'll be the only faculty here who will tell you this but i'm generally not because i see the main problem is our objective is to produce outstanding business students i think you guys are quite far behind compared to uh, what the top schools are going to produce at the end of the at the end of two years so therefore you don't have much time okay so therefore i'm not a fan of all these people spending time on all this sports day and festivals and and uh, freshers party people are spending three days preparing their dance routines for the freshers party these are all things which have should have been left behind in your undergraduate uh, days okay now you're in a different program you should understand the world is different now you've come into a professional program that part of your life is over now you're trying to work you should be totally focused on you understand what i mean by tunnel vision yes, 
that story of Arjun and the eye of the bird you know that that he was only able to see the eye of the bird everybody else was seeing everything else so you should be totally focused on making yourself an outstanding business student and not so much that the time you lose in festivals it's just it's a bad orientation I think that we should not be given giving students these kind of messages that you should be doing a jack of all trades you should be doing this and that you don't need all this balance in life okay there's no uh, I mean if you want to produce outstanding results there's no real balance you need to be totally focused on what you're doing you don't have much time so you need to work very hard be focused on developing yourself as a business student is this clear to get the message yes there's a lot of uh, fun and games happening there the first day I'm going to be a little lenient but later on I'll have to start deducting marks okay so please be att uh, pay attention okay so this message we have already got are you following so far what I'm saying if it feels uh, if it feels like it's disorienting uh, please ask me okay so what we were talking about we we're talking about skills okay I have listed some of the skills uh, I have listed some of the skills here that you need to focus on these are some of the skills communication skills very important okay oral communication is very important I find this problem in every batch I keep telling every batch when I meet them first focus what is the language of global business English. English okay so not that I dislike Hindi I have also taken Hindi uh, two three years in school but Hindi is not the language of global business if we are trying to develop outstanding business students and your Hindi doesn't need any improvement but in many cases your English needs improvement and yet I keep seeing students they could come to faculty and they speak in Hindi now other faculty may not be that particular okay there because you have to be really particular about it and people normally just speak if you speak in Hindi they will respond in Hindi but if you speak to me in Hindi I'll definitely tell you to speak in English please make groups among yourselves where you speak to each other only in English if you're weak in English you need to correct this because by the time you get to your interview stage your English should have been uh, really polished properly okay I've seen students lose out on good job opportunities uh, because their spoken English was not good very good job opportunities highly technically qualified student but the recruiter told me that his communication skills are so poor how are we going to hire him so oral communication is most important I've given you tips on what you should do how you can improve your English it's not rocket science okay many people have done it uh, you have not seen the young Akshay Kumar he could not speak any English at all but now he's able to manage okay Harbhajan has also picked up Mr. Modi has also picked up although he doesn't speak anymore but he actually picked up very well and quite quickly so it can be done you need to focus on it very important communication skills then certain other skills that you have to focus on analytical skills okay uh, domain and strategic thinking I'll just start with this analytical critical thinking that partly related to the logic idea I was talking about but this will also be developed in your in the course of your uh, curriculum right domain knowledge some of it will be coming through to in, in the courses that you do and some of it you will have to follow the instructions that are given to you I'm moving up and down in the notes a little bit uh, remember all this is already with you you know so there is a general instruction there's a note uh, this is a document okay and here I would direct you to so I've already told you that uh, the this is my YouTube channel here you'll find uh, the playlist of courses and in that playlist of courses you will find I'm talking about at this point we are discussing the point of uh, domain knowledge okay it's not just concepts but also news you understand what domain knowledge is domain knowledge means if you're doing finance you should understand all the concepts involved in uh, analyzing financial situations financial markets okay cost of capital then different uh, the stuff that you've done in FM1 then all the different types of instruments futures forward swaps options you have to understand all these products this is part of your domain knowledge how markets work concepts but there's also the news element okay now I'm coming to the news elements and that's why I'm coming to this point so here you will see that there are all the things are arranged each each playlist is a theme every course is here okay every finance uh, financial law course will also come up your video of today this this video today will be uploaded and all the other videos for your lab there'll be a new course created 
uh, which will have spring 2020 here okay look for it and you can find it although you can just subscribe and get a notification you'll get the notification for the new video okay under miscellaneous lectures here there is a miscellaneous lectures playlist under this this is on the subject of news okay go to this and you'll open this here there's one important here two important videos there are many videos here you can watch them if you want okay um, mainly this is this is the most important one I think here you have more detailed guidance on how you should be tracking business news so your domain knowledge is not just concepts but also news are you following yes. everything that's happening so if you decide to focus let's say on say supply chain management suppose your fo focus area is logistics and supply chain management I'm just giving you an example you're aware of these terms okay all this now e-commerce supply chain management has become very important okay so suppose that's your focus you go to Google and set up a Google alert you'll see all the guidance here Google news alert for supply chain management everything that happens in the world if there's a port strike in Brazil the I I know supply chain has got clogged because I know is not moving out from the port you should be aware of it everything that happens some earthquake in Japan what it does to operations at Tokyo port everything you should be aware of everything that's happening in your area around the world you should be aware of all the things and all these events will form part of your knowledge base your experience base it's like you're building up your experience before you even enter industry are you following what I'm saying continuous news absorption many elements of guidance are given here just follow this video you can get a lot of that okay I've asked you to watch various business channels so um, yeah coming back to this so the idea of domain knowledge is not just concepts which you'll be taught in your courses but also following the news in your area of interest if you're interested in brand management set up a news alert for brand management analyze all the brands everything that's going on anywhere in the world okay nothing should miss uh, nothing should be missed okay so analytical critical thinking again this will come to some extent from the courses you can work on your logic textbook strategic thinking is very important strategic thinking includes uh, 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 basically uh, the idea here is to integrate all the different domains okay you understand you haven't done any courses or strategy okay but um, for instance if you, you all know Netflix now Netflix that started out as a video rental site they were not initially into streaming now they took a strat strategic decision to get into this business when it was actually not not a big deal nobody was uh, really nobody thought it was a hot area but they went into it and they invested a lot of money so there's a financial element to it the cost and how you finance it whether you use debt or equity there's a finance element to it there are technology elements to it very interesting technology because te uh, Netflix is actually competing with Amazon right with Amazon is selling videos and these guys are saying you don't need to buy the video just watch it I'll stream it for you so they're actually competing with Amazon right but at the same time Netflix is using the Amazon web services technology infrastructure to deliver their product so you heard this term frenemy yes, friend and enemy so Amazon and Netflix have a frenemy kind of relationship now these are all elements of the strategy where you're integrating everything finance marketing then if you're streaming then how do you market the streaming service to consumers around the world how do you launch in different countries your content selection everything because Indian content is different from US content so all these decisions put together this is what makes the overall strategy and the overall strategy has to work well right like all the members of a cricket team have to uh, jive well you know uh, work well together and produce a, a good performance or any any sports team so the idea behind strategic thinking is also what the idea of big picture integration being able to integrate and Netflix also has very innovative HR policies they allow people to take unlimited amounts of leave Netflix's HR policy so you can see everything is connected so when you're producing an innovative product okay an innovative service you're delivering how do they inspire people to work at Netflix they have unlimited leave there's no limit on the amount of leave you can take so they have all kinds of you can Google Netflix HR policy so all these things strategy is a combination of all these elements so when you're studying all the different subjects you have to think along these lines because if you see I've given you a slightly old link because you can't find them anywhere um, this will not come out very well uh, in your case yeah the job skills report you can see it later on at home they they survey they try to see the skills gap I don't know if it's coming out well here it's a little bit better than the other class 
but here what they are trying to find is even from the top business schools they are trying to find skills which companies want in this top right these are the skills that companies want but are normally not seen quite rare these skills are quite rare here you'll find communication leadership strategic thinking creative thinking all these skills okay so this is some kind of a guidance for you as to when as to how uh, you know you go about developing these skills but i've already given you the link so this is the idea okay so this is the second point is uh, first is the work ethic the second is basically uh, the work ethic is directed to developing skills are you getting the broad themes that i'm harping on okay work ethic skills not degrees undergraduate focus on getting marks and getting degrees that's not going to help you if you don't have knowledge and skills which are useful to a company they are not going to hire you okay they don't care what grades you got not so much so focus on developing the skills okay now i'll spend a brief amount of time on uh, just on the finance electives because um, every year we are getting a lot of students who don't seem to have any interest in finance and they take finance and it's quite a dense subject actually and then they're just getting bored in the class and then disturbing the other students so in an effort to differ, uh, to prevent that so what i would say about finance is you might hear from a lot of people that finance is a very mathematical subject i would take a different view i don't think finance is very mathematical this is help this is uh, useful for anybody who is thinking that okay maybe i want to take finance i'm not sure the way you can make yourself sure is very easy to do that i would say to you the main uh, decision and this is not just for finance for every subject should i take marketing not some people came one one of your students she came to me and said you know i've got very good very poor marks in ma marketing so i'm not taking marketing that should not be the driver you should be driven by your interest are you interested in marketing do you spend your time thinking about brands looking at an advertisement thinking that no no this ad should not have been made like this it should have been done in animation you know and this should have not been uh, put at this time of the day if you are thinking like this that means you have an interest in advertising marketing these ideas so everything should be dis driven by uh, your interest in the subject so your choice of a subject should be driven by your interest in the subject are you fascinated by the subject and then only you decide what is happening walia and uh, who is next to aman who is next what's your name aman okay you guys are also talking a lot first class i'm giving you a little bit of a leeway walia walia you don't uh, come and sit next to ahuja then let's separate uh, aman you are ahuja right yes sir okay good so i'll take some time to get used to the names okay so are you following the message very important a lot of people get scared of finance so oh, it's very mathematical but i don't think it's very mathematical it's just class 12 you should not have a fear of maths if every time you see an equation you pass out <laughs> then uh, then you have a problem if you don't have a fear of maths it's okay you just need class 12 algebra that's all you need to be able to think mathematically some of which i'll guide you on how to do that okay instead of doing it mechanically you have to think mathematically mainly it's a conceptual subject it's a very much it's very much like law it's conceptual it's logical but it's quite complex concept so if you are not interested in the subject you won't be able to put in the effort that is required to learn the subject properly this is true for every subject you understand why i'm talking about interest because to learn any subject quiet quiet i don't want to see any noise if you are feeling bored just go to sleep don't disturb don't talk to your partner okay guys so this applies to every subject interest is your main driver because why is that because to get to become an expert in any subject you have to put in an enormous amount of work work ethic remember you can't become an expert without putting in enough and you are never going to be able to put in work because we are human beings we are driven by our emotions it's not possible for you to put in the work in a subject in which you are not interested so if you are not interested in hr you take hr you will not be able to become good at hr so it's a waste of time take the subject in which you are interested now how do you find out whether you are interested in finance very simple i'm just giving you a clue here start from the i think it says here start from summer we name the courses in the us style season summer fall winter spring so what you have available in your summer time in your summer break you can do this exercise if you want to take a decision start with summer which means ipm okay like last course done all the course videos everything is captured entire class performance and anything that's happening in the class so you can actually do the entire course of online okay the only difference is you can't ask questions 
because you were not there so the whole course can be done online so just if you just do one course you'll be able to get your answer is this something that I like or is this something that is not appealing to me if it's not appealing to you then don't take it are you following the point okay there are some instructions also I've given you in terms of the other videos from miscellaneous lectures how to track business news do you are you finding fast financial markets fascinating okay that's the main thing then summer then fall and then winter these three electives you can do all three if you want uh, this will give you a very good flavor at this point of how, what it's going to be like in the finance electives okay so instead of getting into a position where you join the course and then after five six sessions you're finding that this is not worth it for me it's not uh, you don't have to wait that long you can do this exercise virtually are you following what I'm saying you can solve that problem much earlier by spending your summer uh, looking at some of the course material and looking at some of the lectures and decide whether you want to do this or not okay that is an easy way to do in finance you can take that decision early on okay so we will talk I hope you guys are not finding this lecture boring are you finding it boring okay there are some philosophical points which I wanted to emphasize which I think should be taught to everybody uh, we don't have an opportunity to tell you about all these things but I think that everyone should be made aware of these things it may be useful for you okay the other main message I want to give you is the importance of individualism okay which is a message which normally would not come across in our our society we tend to de-emphasize de -emphasize individualism but this is very important actually because it's important that you spend your life you spend your life making your own mistakes not your uncle's mistakes or your grandmother's mistakes okay so if your grandmother wants you to become a lawyer but you are not you are not interested in law then you should not be studying law because you are you're going to get bored you'll make a mess of yourself you should do what you're interested in okay there's a basic message that uh, you guys you all remember Bruce Lee so Bruce Lee used to say uh, he had this expression express yourself okay Bruce Lee was called the artist of life he's a very interesting character actually so um, uh, philosophy painting he did a lot of painting as well so express yourself these all these points are actually on the same theme of individualism okay this is a famous American philosopher you have to basically ascend and this you'll find as a problem in many cases because it's not so easy a lot of the time what happens is we don't have enough confidence in ourselves and we get swayed by what others are saying and so it's very important that you uh, you know have faith in your own feelings if it feels to you that this is not the right course of action you should follow your own instincts it's very important to understand that and you have all these um, uh, uh, things from history that can guide you uh, that can give you confidence that it's the right course of action okay uh, you guys have heard of Frank Sinatra it's a famous singer okay very famous singer so Frank Sinatra had quite a unconventional life a uh, bit of a troublemaker and all that but there's a song called uh, my way written on the same theme of individualism there's a song by Paul Anker Paul Anker is a songwriter singer songwriter he wrote this song called my way uh, you can look up the lyrics very interesting uh, whatever I did I made a lot of mistakes but I did it my way that's the theme of the song which I think is very important okay so you live your life making your own mistakes not other people's mistakes and this is the Spanish version of the song quite nice you can listen to it Gypsy Kings okay so you can look at the lyrics of this song same concept uh, individualism and some other points which I think are very important the English poet Stephen Spender this is a useful way of thinking because sometimes you might it is helpful to think about what is the purpose of your life sometimes it may seem a little philosophical at your age maybe it's not fashionable to think about these things because maybe it's a little uncool to think about philosophical things but it's from time to time it's useful to think about these things and so if you think about what is your purpose in life this is a very useful statement to keep in mind that your duty is to fulfill your potential everybody has some potential you have to figure out what your potential is and, and this is the only way that you're going to find happiness remember that money is not important right happiness is more important more important to feel happy and fulfilled satisfied right 
uh, because many people with a lot of money have all kinds of problems you know that these guys like Ben Affleck you know Ben Affleck yes, yeah lots of money but he's an alcoholic he keeps going in and out of rehab his ex-wife is driving him to rehab all the time then Robert Downey jr. also had a lot of problems with drugs okay these guys they're not doing drugs for fun they are actually doing drugs because they are unhappy they are doing booze because they are unhappy so there's a problem so money alone doesn't make you happy you need to have a sense of purpose you need to have some kind of uh, core uh, philosophy which drives you uh, which will uh, help you to achieve that kind of satisfaction okay so here are some ideas yes uh, lots of talking going on okay again captain of the ship of your destiny these are all famous people famous architect and designer so the idea here is that you're captaining you're piloting your ship okay and after your pgdm program you can take drop it's like the ship is dropping anchor and you're thinking about okay where do i want my ship to go in the future think about what you have done in the past where which direction do you want to go about you know it's a useful way of thinking about your life okay so these are all ideas and are all connected to the idea of fulfilling your own potential being driven by your inner instinct your own inner voice not other people's uh, uh, ideas okay uh, emotional versus rational also important to be aware of this difference like everyone has two identities within you okay you have an emotional part and a rational part a simple way to give you an idea of that is basically this idea of let's say take the example of going to the gym now you may not feel like going to the gym because nobody likes working hard and all that but uh, so maybe you want to just hang loose and sit on the sofa and watch IPL but that is your emotional part right but the rational part will drive you the job of the rational part of you should you should think about yourself in this way that in my head I have two parts the emotional part and the rational part you should try to be conscious of what the emotional part is saying to you and what the rational part is saying to you and the job of the rational part is to make sure that you do the correct things which will help you to fulfill your potential okay to basically uh, you know express yourself fulfill your potential so the rational part is where I said it's like a trustee of your talent so your potential comes from your talent right are you following your uh, your potential comes from your talent and your talent has to be exploited so the rational part is basically like the trustee of your talent you heard this term trustee a trustee you have the trust you know what a trust is so people said it's a legal term actually that let's say Ratan Tata might set up a trust for his nephews and all that uh, for maybe the nephews are very young okay so he will set up a trustee whose job is to manage the trust is like a pool of funds so the trustee will manage the pool of funds for the benefit of the beneficiaries that is his nephews okay the trustees job is not to manage it for his own benefit but to manage it for the benefit of the nephews okay the beneficiaries of the trust so your talent is the beneficiary of the trust and your rational part is the trustee of your talent so it's like your rational part is watching over you and being aware that you you have a certain talent maybe you can become a great programmer and the rational parts job is to make sure that from time to time you are made to work hard on programming so that you can develop your potential as a programmer are you following what I'm saying okay this is a useful way to think about it because everybody has this okay another very important point power of independent thought this is actually very important because very often you find people with two PhDs who don't have the power to think for themselves the very big problem most people you know they can't think for themselves they get swayed by what people are saying it's very important when you go and it's just connected to the idea of individualism listening to your inner voice you need to develop your inner voice so this also should be you should be constantly aware that as I'm studying as I'm studying I should also initially when you study something you may not have a well-developed uh, set of views so you're just repeating what is in the textbook but you should also have it in the back of the back of your mind that eventually I need to develop my own way of looking at it like I gave you the example like when you're looking at if you're a marketing obsessed guy you're looking at billboards you're analyzing the billboard you're taking a critical view that this billboard should not have been placed over here maybe it should have been on Janpath okay so location of the billboard design everything you have an opinion on everything and you can justify your opinion that takes time to develop but you should have it in the back of your mind that that's where you want to go eventually it's not sufficient to repeat what is in the textbook it is very important to eventually develop your own way of looking at things 
Are you following? These are all points to keep in mind. Anybody getting bored? Are you getting bored? Yes. Little bit boring, right? Yes. Sir. Okay. So what do we do? Let's try and finish this course. We have only about 15 minutes. I want to deliver this material. Uh, okay. So uh, anyway, so section B was topic talking more, but they didn't. Uh, they were saying they were not feeling bored, but maybe they were actually feeling more bored. But anyway, but it's just a uh, just an idea that I had, which I thought with everything. I thought that certain ideas should be communicated to you uh, because uh, you know it may help you in the way you guide yourself. It goes beyond lab. Okay, another very important point, another very important statement, which is, uh, have you heard this expression before? Everything that happens to you, not for a reason. This is different. Everything that happens to you, 90% No, it's the reverse actually. What you're saying is the outlook is more important, right? Your perception of the fact. So I think this is a very important. Just bear with me. I okay. I re I, I recognize you're feeling bored, but just bear with me, and uh, just bear with me for 15 more minutes, and let's finish this module because I think these are more important. Okay. So you should trust the fact that I have more experience than you. So if I'm telling you this, just try and uh, suspend your judgment and absorb what I'm telling you. Okay. I think this statement is very important. I think it's so important that everybody should have them have this statement pasted on their wall, and you should look at it every day <laughs> until you understand the real meaning of the statement you'll find that everything that has happened in your life you may not be happy with some of the outcomes okay maybe you didn't get into a good school in class 10 or um, so everything that has happened in your life actually reflects your own mindset because we have a tendency to blame other people and blame circumstances and all that but actually you'll find that your own mindset has driven all the results and right now I'm just telling you this and you're just hearing it uh, so it doesn't really uh, register that's why I say that keep looking at the statement every few weeks and one day it'll hit you like a ton of bricks okay I'll just give you a brief example as to when you really understand um, that this this principle that we have in the Gita right that your job is to do your duty and not worry about the consequences right so you'll see I was aware of this statement but uh, it never really hit I never really understood the statement until something happened like in my evidence paper like I put in a huge amount of effort into my LLB program so in my evidence paper they just arbitrarily failed me and it was so frustrating and then I eventually I found out from my I, I took an answer sheet copy and I found out that I hadn't actually done badly in the course but it's just it was arbitrarily marked so then I re that's when I first time the for the first time I realized what this statement means that you don't worry about the consequences and you just focus on doing your duty because you have so little control over the consequences that if you worry about the consequences you will not be able to function in life you have to focus on just doing your duty but this as I said and, and not worry because the consequences are not under your control and if you focus on that you'll basically get paralyzed because I was so disheartened when I saw the result that I was like it was very uh, very disappointing but then I have to move on I have to keep on going to the next paper so this is why I, then I understood for the first time I understood in my gut this is what it means to understand something in your gut that so what I'm saying to you is that one day you'll understand the meaning of the statement in your gut that what it means uh, to have everything happening to you reflecting your mindset only okay so uh, we have a little time so we are going to spend this uh, time covering some of these topics okay okay so you are focused on improving yourself one thing uh, you've heard this term called observing ego it's a term from psychology actually which uh, teaches you to kind of observing ego is a part of you that can observe your thoughts okay you might have noticed sometimes that let's say you're studying something but suddenly you notice that uh, your mind has already drifted to something else then I don't know if you've done this exercise but you can actually find out how in what steps did your mind drift from what you were studying let's say you're studying mathematics and then suddenly your mind has drifted to some part maybe some trip you took to Kerala or something but how did it go from here to there there was some sequence of steps it's all logical right it's all connected so if you can trace back the train of thought as to how you went from here to there that puts you into the habit of you know observing your own thoughts that's why we call it meta thoughts 
Meta means you're rising, rising above that level like meta learning, learning about learning. Okay. Meta thought is thinking about your own thoughts. So if you get into this habit of observing your own thoughts, that puts you into a situation where you're in a better position to understand this connection. How your outcomes, this is happening, these are the outcomes how they are being driven by your mindset okay so this is a way of looking at things i'm just showing you i'm just giving you all these tips because uh, if you have these ideas in your head you can put them into practice they will be useful for you okay so you should also get into that habit of observing your own thoughts okay right so that um, and here are some uh, so so basically your thoughts your belief systems and how they may sabotage the achievement of your goals so this is the thinking part of it how you uh, change your thinking and change your outcomes well, on this point i've given you two books which you can read this is a greek philosopher called epictetus are you aware of uh, this guy called a roman emperor called marcus aurelius you know marcus aurelius he's the you know this russell pro film called gladiator Yes, so in the film there's a Joachim Phoenix uh, murders an old man his father in the yes, first part of the film yes, so that old man is the character of Marcus Aurelius he was a great Roman Emperor a great conqueror but he was also a philosopher okay so he wrote this book called meditations how he was trying to apply philosophy in his real life in his uh, daily life so philosophy has a lot of real life applications and this is a very good example of that so this book is also very important this is a teacher of Marcus Aurelius Epictetus uh, he taught Marcus Aurelius so you can read this book it's very useful partly what you were saying that uh, you know like that uh, if the events are neutral but it's our perception that colors the events our perception uh, you know colors the events but the events are neutral these kind of ideas you will get here this is an inspirational book Roman soldiers used to carry this book into battle okay so uh, in many ways the message is similar to what is there in the Gita as well this is a modern book which you will have to buy if you want to if you are interested in self improvement this is I think is a good book to read okay Anthony Robbins unlimited power uh, it's a it's a good book to read I think uh, so these are some of the books that you can use to uh, start focusing on the way you think and improving that so this is from cognitive psychology okay um, all right now last few points okay you heard of this term called kaizen what does kaizen mean continuous. not just continuous but also small yes small and continuous okay so the idea here is remember what have we been harping on the theme the theme that we have been harping on is that the theme of uh, work ethic uh, being aware of your individual individual talents your individual goals and trying to develop an independent way of thinking okay and also obviously connected to this idea is the idea of self-improvement because you're trying to develop skills you're improving yourself and so when you're trying to develop skills it's not so important to uh, make huge strides the idea of Kaizen is that even small improvements are fine they are still worthwhile uh, and you should not get disappointed if you're making uh, only small improvements and not huge improvements because if you can continue that process every day uh, that's what leads to eventually leads to huge uh, you know uh, tremendous achievements okay so the idea of Kaiser is even small improvements can be beneficial and uh, you know how for instance you know how uh, stone breakers you know how they break stones do you know how they break stones huge boulders you know you know the story of how they break the huge boulders which are broken manually what they do is they take a huge boulder and they hammer it every day they hammer it for a few minutes every day and they keep doing this and then one fine day and they seem it seems like they're not getting any results because it's not cracking open but one fine what is happening is all those things are creating minute cracks in the boulder and one fine day then they hammer it in the same way the whole thing cracks apart so this is a similar idea of Kaizen that you make small improvements and then one day you'll find that there's a tremendous leap forward. Okay, on the point of improvement, I will just introduce, to the, introduce you to this file which is also in your folder. If you click this, you'll find this. This is a sheet which I maintain which has links to all these course portals. Okay, now uh, what I would emphasize is two things. 
uh, first please emphasize your PGDM program first don't ignore your PGDM program because it's important to maintain some decent grades because you might get filtered out in the interview process if your grades are very poor if you're in the PGDM program do justice to the program and over and above if you have time beyond the program then you can do this these are the important course portals you can go there and find out some of these courses if you're interested in you can do these courses and you can audit the courses okay if you look at any of these so if you look at this is a Harvard MIT collaboration uh, and <coughs> disclose this so if you go here let's say you're interested let's say if you're interested in say uh, data science you can go to data science you can find some good courses please select good university you guys know what the good universities are don't take some uh, most of these universities here will be good okay so the idea here is that um, this I think is too big um, the font size is maybe too big so Georgia Tech is a very good university they have um, especially for this kind of topic what I would say is you guys are familiar with the idea of auditing courses Yes, sir. auditing courses right auditing means you don't have to get a degree it's like somebody sits in this lab course as an observer he listens to all the classes he absorbs all the learning but he doesn't sit for the end term and we don't mark his CP and he doesn't get a grade but actually if you want to look at the learning he has absorbed all the learning okay because if he comes prepared with the cases he's absorbed. so auditing is when you sit in the course but you don't get graded you don't get a degree and a mark sheet but you have absorbed all the learning so you can sign up for free and audit most of these courses because they're all charging you money for the certificates now they're trying earlier on a lot of stuff was available for free but now they're charging everything for certificates but uh, everyone is charging for certificates but you can audit the course and pick up the learning okay remember that what matters is your learning so if you can put it on your CV if you've done the auditing of if you have audited the course and you've absorbed the learning okay if you're confident about the material you must be confident about the material you can put it on your CV even if you don't have a certificate it doesn't matter you say that I didn't have I didn't want to pay the money but I have learned everything in the course you following what I'm saying yes. learning is more important so the other thing I would say is also don't get caught up too much in this so in a way it's little conflicting advice uh, sometimes we notice some of our students get caught up in certificate collection they feel like we are already doing their PGDA program we'll have the degree now let me collect some certificates but don't forget what I've told you here this is very important okay this domain knowledge this domain knowledge part is very important so focus on learning learning is much more important than certificates and degrees to some extent you need certificates also but learning is much more important so make sure that your learning is solid okay don't get many people get caught up in certificate collection you will get the certificates because this is now a money-making business people are selling certificates this also become a business right everybody selling so you have to be very careful you do these courses only from top-notch universities and uh, and be aware that you should not forget about actual learning knowledge is more important okay so don't lose sight of these aspects which I've taught, taught you and how to get how to improve your uh, knowledge continuously okay all right now let's complete the last part here okay you know what MOOCs are right does everybody know know what MOOCs are you don't know MOOCs let's ask some of the people there who are very active what is your name I forgot what is your name Kartike okay yes Kartike can you tell us what MOOCs are since you're so active you and your buddies your two buddies next to you any idea MOOCs okay again because remember you are students so you not only should be learning but you should also have some idea about what are the common methods of learning what is happening in the world of learning this is about learning about learning meta learning so MOOCs are massive open online courses you can google it later on okay so massive either you put the online first or the open first but massive open online courses the idea is these are online courses you can do them from anywhere in the world and uh, massive because obviously uh, you know you massive numbers of people sign up online courses you get the same learning okay 
so MOOCs have become very big in the world today but always be careful that uh, you don't get into the certificate collection dry, uh, business okay don't get lost. knowledge is the most important you have to develop skills you should always be asking yourself why should a company hire me every day ask yourself this question why should a company hire me what can I do for them always ask this question okay so these are your resources okay the other thing I would say one minute guys don't get restless now this today I'm being lenient because it's the first day but from now onwards what will happen is for the next class onwards if I see any uh, if I see any um, misbehavior like Karthike what he has done and his two buddies this will become minus 20 or something okay so this red line is for your scores your total CP score will get affected by your penalty points so this red column is for your um, penalty points okay so anybody seen talking your group will lose penalty points. the whole group will suffer so the group leader had better keep the people in line okay um, last point we have a little bit of half a minute I'll just tell you one more point okay one minute guys I would say that uh, on the certificate collection business okay if you have to learn anything first do justice to the PGDM program but I would say the most important thing you can start is learn to code properly if you can if you don't find it totally repulsive then it's different but I think it's very useful everybody should give it a shot okay and you can use this MIT course it's a top-notch university for coding Python coding course from MIT you can get the course materials videos okay